like the Ants Energy Bootlegger Project. We have a lot of wood around here that's down and dead because the wind storms will come through and break the trees off at the top, like this here tree. The wind just came and sheared the branches right off of it. And after they shear off, the wood is laying down on the ground. You can see there's a lot of firewood right there. And uh, if you leave it and you leave a lot of wood like that in the woods during a dry year, it becomes forest fire tinder. And the forest fires are way worse. And uh, if you use it up, you can there will still probably be some forest fires, but they will be less intense because there's no fuel for them and less fuel. Live trees, they don't burn as these dead trees. And so that's one part of what is behind the energy bootlegger technology and why we need this technology so much is because we can get rid of dead trees and uh, make the forest fires less worse. I started building the boiler for the energy bootlegger in early winter of 2010-2011. <clears throat> and here later that winter I framed it in and boxed in the boiler and the reaction vessel. There you can see the reaction <coughs> vessel and the round circle. There are the doors open on the reactor where you put wood in order to make the fuel. There's another shot of it with the hinge. Okay, here's the firebox, and it also shows the catalytic converter now on the inside of the firebox. There's the gauges and the relief valves for the uh, pressure tanks. That's the relief valve for the boiler. Here's the generator that's uh, hooked up to a little makeshift turbine. And uh, I'm generating electricity with that, who you'll see later in the movie. This is the wood that goes into the reaction vessel that's going to uh, make the gas. So I'm filling this up with wood and then I'm going to seal it off and then that's going to make our gas to run our truck. Steam, make enough horsepower of steam to get it going. So there you, we got all that in there and now we're going to fill her up with this, this 50 pounds of wood so we know that 53, I think. 53 pounds, okay. <laughs> get all this wood in there and get it lit up. and. Uh, oh, he was having trouble holding that 53 yeah, pounds. Yeah, that was tough. I thought I, he was stronger than uh, that. Uh, yeah, I think I talked tougher than <laughs> what I am. That was a god darn lot of weight for me. Was... The talking wore him out. Yeah. Okay. Yo, flick of the Vic. Okay, we'll be back when she takes off now. Then we'll show you some more. There's a gauge over here. That's It's got like about a 60 pound pressure into the reaction vessel that we filled up with that wood the other day, or today, earlier. And then um, from there, that gas pressure is gonna go in here and I'm gonna turn this valve on. And you can hear it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. And now look over there at that gauge. And that gauge is going up. Yeah, keep looking at that gauge, you know, because it doesn't go up that fast, but it was starting out at two pounds, and uh, now it's up past three pounds, and so I'm getting gas from there 
to there into these two tanks and it's up to four just about now it's getting up so that's I just want to show you that that's where the gas that I'm using comes from okay here we go trying to get this uh, with the black background to see the the flame out of this is gas that's coming out of them tanks there we go yeah you can see that yeah and, and that's the gas that I'm making there and compressing and later on we'll show the truck running on it again there's the tank with 80 psi of wood gas that I made and there's the regulator and the IMCO carburetor it's actually called a mixer okay gotta turn on the gas here the wood gas from the compressed wood gas from the tank here we go and fire up old Bessie one more time just to prove that I can duplicate the experiment it's not not just a one-time ordeal the truck does it And I've got a, um, I got it to do a little more than idle now. It's still not running down the road, but check this out. pretty soon now. All right. Thank you. Yes, this truck is now running on wood gas that I made and compressed. I would like to thank my family and all my good friends who believed in me to get me this far, to get the energy bootlegger project this far. kid here for local ideas and the energy bootlegger project and this is the spring clean out I didn't have the energy boot bootlegger hooked up to a house to get the hot water or the heat out of it so I only ran it a couple two three times in order to check it out make electricity an experiment and in those two three times besides getting the gas that I ran my truck on, the gaseous fuel, then I want to show you what I got out of the tank. It's like the spring clean out day here. So um, I took this tank only so far and drained it all out. And we got this here liquid. This is just like butamin, I would say. Got this here tar. crude oil out of it out of the tank oh I don't know probably only a cup or so yeah, that's pretty cool looking oil eh? that's that's better than the tar sands man this stuff's good stinky but it's damn good oil and uh, got quite a bit of it for just a small run and then I'm sure there's methane in here but when a later show or something we're gonna have to boil this down because I'm sure there's a lot of water in here too. So uh, that's what we got this winter out of about maybe three or four runs and only in the daytime. 
not hardly at all. It wasn't used at all compared to if you were running this thing 24 hours a day to get your heat and hot water and then you were working with the rest of it, just uh, you're going to get a lot more than this. There, This is water. I'm sure it's, there might only be a gallon of methanol in there. We're going to see. Like I said, we'll boil that down. And then um, the tar here, you know, so like I said, it, it, this was only with one, not even 24 hours. I did, the only time I ran it was to make them movies. And so um, there would be a lot. I'm sure we'd get like five gallons worth of that. And that tar, this tar is slippery and greasy. It's stinky. This is, this is the old Jed Clampett was talking about. And then besides that, then when you open up the door on there and stuff, you get uh, stuff like this out of there. This is like, this is pretty pure dark black carbon here, man. That's, that's another good product. So it's not just getting the gas in order to run the machine. It's also getting all these other products. And this stuff, well, I can't tell because my hands stink from that tar. And the tar does stink. But this stuff, it doesn't, you know, like... I can barely smell it, so it, it's most of the aerobic, uh, aromatic gases are off of it. So uh, this is something that I never uh, considered before, is all of the other products besides the gas. I was just going on the gas because it seemed to be the easiest to get down the road. And then, uh, lo and behold, you got all these other products too. So uh, this is the energy bootlegger on such a wonderful day. March. It's only like March 14th. It's not even St. Patty's Day. It's like, boy, I could like even strip down here. Oh, look at her big. Da -da. Oh, in the summertime when the weather's hot, you should ride up and touch the sky. Woo. For this world, I'm bound to ramble. I need more friends to help me now. He needs more friends. Help him now.